and I don't like you either. Now if you've got fence posts like me that are either broken or leaning, today I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest way of getting them vertical again. Now it's not pretty and it's not perfect, but it is the quickest. Yeah, I'm talking about you. If you own a fence, at some point you're going to have to do some maintenance on it. And the most common problem with all fences is posts that are either leaning or that have completely broken off. And that's exactly what I've got here. I've got a break at the top of the concrete, at the bottom of the post, where it's gradually rotted away. And I can feel that that's where it's rotating. And this is never going to get any better. It's only ever going to get worse. And then it will fall down. So I need to sort this out. Now there's a couple of ways of solving this problem. The first of which is you can take down the fence, you can take the post out, put a new post in and rebuild the fence. That obviously takes a bit of time. And I've also got cables and I've got water pipe running along this fence as well. So today I thought I'd do something that's a little bit more cheap and cheerful. And this is also in an area of the garden that I don't really mind what it looks like as well. It's not like invisible in the main part of the garden. It's around the corner next to my workshop. So today I'm going to use a concrete spur to fix this. Now, essentially, a concrete spur is just a lump of concrete, half of which you put into the ground, the other half of which you bolt to the good bit of the post. And that essentially keeps it upright and gives it another few years life. Now there's a couple of caveats to this. Obviously the rest of the post has got to be in reasonable condition. There's no point in fixing concrete to a post that's completely rotten. And luckily mine is in a reasonable condition. And unfortunately the second thing is you're still going to have to dig a hole whether you like it or not. To put this spur in this is going to go into a hole and get surrounded in concrete. So you're still going to have to dig a hole. Nothing is perfect in this world. So I think before I get on and start trying to dig the hole I need to clear this to see what I'm looking at and to make sure that I don't damage any of the cables. And also if this has dropped a little bit I'm gonna to have to just jack it up a, a touch so when I put the spur in it's all at the right level. I think I need a string line and everything else so time to get on with that. Obviously, before you can really assess and fix any fencing, you need to be able to see what you're dealing with. So removing any foliage or plants near to the fence is essential and sometimes quite a major job that just has to be done before you start. This area is just down the side of my garage and is just a bit of a storage stroke dumping ground. So it's somewhere that I don't keep properly cut or look after in any way. Whew. Save that for later. With all the weeds and materials moved out of the way, I can finally see what I'm dealing with. So that's definitely gone at that point, exactly where I said, which is where the water gathers and it just rots the timber over a few years. I've also come across my first challenge, and this is complete coincidence, that exactly where I want to dig, I've got this concrete plinth that I now need to take out, which isn't the end of the world, but things are never quite as straightforward as you think. <laughs> To understand exactly where the broken post should end up while I'm working on it, I set up a simple string line on good posts either side of the problem one that not only gives me the line that it should be on, but the level as well. I'm lucky in this instance that it looks like although the post has broken, it hasn't dropped. To get it out of the way, I temporarily tie up this water pipe so I don't damage it while I'm working as it's charged and under pressure. At this stage, before you do any digging, it's a good idea to temporarily strengthen the fence and tie it well into the post to make sure that it doesn't collapse and fall apart while you're fixing it. 
I have an old spare cant rail here that I slip in and fix above the bottom rail, which will help support the two sides of the fence when I remove the bottom of the post. In engineering terms, we call this temporary works, which is essentially just adding in additional members which help support the item while the work is carried out. Just over a metre away in front of this fence is the wall of my garage, so I pop in a fixing into the mortar, which allows me to tie a string line to the top of the post and pull it vertical. If you don't happen to have a large brick structure close to your fending post, then a timber A-frame support is the best alternative, like I used in my How to Fix a Leaning Fence Post video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. With the fence and post supported, I can confidently start digging around the foundation and undermining the post. So that's not very much concrete surround to that fence post, which is exactly the same as what I found around the rest of the garden, which I, I suppose isn't a surprise because they would have all gone in by the same contractor at the same time. So I'm going to have to tidy this up and try to work out what I'm going to do. In the meantime, go and see Stuart in the workshop who will explain what you should be seeing at this point and how we need to prepare it. So the shape of a typical fence foundation is conical, although a lot of people really try to put it in cylindrical, but generally as you go down things tend to get a little bit tighter to the bottom. So there's your concrete and your post holding into the concrete, and this is a concrete surround all the way around. If we look at the top in plan view, we'll end up with a round lump of concrete with the post sitting hopefully somewhere in the middle with cover all the way around. That's not really what I've got in my garden. It's very, very thin, but really what you should have is maybe an inch or two of cover all the way around the post. Now, our new spur is gonna to want to sit somewhere like this, running down the side of your existing post. So really, we need to take this concrete out. We also need to take out any timber in there. Whether it's rotten or not, this timber really wants to be removed and you're better off replacing it with good concrete. So essentially, the whole front third of that concrete foundation needs to be removed. A, to get the existing post out, and B, to make room for the spur. So really, all of that needs to come out. And depth-wise, you really need to go the depth of half the length of the spur. That means half sits in the ground concreted in, and the other half is sitting out supporting the existing post, which really means you're probably going to the, at least the depth of your existing foundation, depending on how deep that is. Now, I just heard that Stuart's found some rotten timber, so let's go back and see where he's up to. <laughs> Oof. That. It's a bit soft. <laughs> oh my word. So this is exactly why when you're taking out this part of the concrete, you really want to be taking out the old rotten wood as well because it's just not going to help in the future. If you can replace that wooden section with more concrete, then that's really going to help. as well as using spades and wrecking bars to remove the old wood, which falls out fairly easily. I also put a spade bit in my drill to persuade some of the lower timber to break up. Unlike me, if you do have good quality concrete foundations, then you'll probably also need to use a long wrecking bar or an SDS drill with a breaker function and a chisel to remove it. I'm looking for 500. Okay, not much left to go. With everything removed and the hole to the right depth, I use my cordless circular saw to trim off the bottom of the post back to good timber. 
even on full depth, this doesn't get through a four inch post. And it also has quite a small kerf. So I use a tenon saw that's quite thin to finish off the cut the best I can. So I'm ready to fix this in place and I thought I'd just say a couple of words on these spurs. The ones that I've seen, there's two sizes. There's three inch square, which is this is, or four inch square. Now I've got a four inch post and maybe the best thing would have been for me to use a four inch square spur. But two things on that. First of all, this is a metre long. Four inch square is 1.2 metres long, so you have to dig a bigger hole. And secondly, when I picked one up, I could hardly pick up one end of the thing. So just bear that in mind. These are really heavy. The three inch ones are manageable. The four inch ones are blimmin' heavy. The other thing I noticed as well is that the holes that go through that you actually fix through with are incredibly small. They're probably no bigger than a six mil or maybe eight mil. So it's not as if you can get a nice, long, thick coach bolt through here because by the time you get a coach bolt that's six inches long, that's like an M10, it would never fit through. So if you're gonna do this, have a think about what you're gonna use as a fixing. I've got some uh, 150 mil long timber screws here. I think they'll do the job quite nicely and they, they fit nicely at the end. So just, if you're gonna do this, just make sure that you understand what fixings are gonna work for you. This isn't my first choice of fixing by a long shot. I would much rather use a long coach bolt, but I can't find one narrow enough to go through the hole. And also, I don't really want to have to remove any panels from the other side of the fence to be able to fix it in place. So these screws will have to do. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I can't believe Stuart's going to use Postcrete. Well, yeah, I don't like the stuff. And from an engineering point of view, I can't prove that it's mixed properly before it goes in the hole or it mixes properly in the hole at all. And I think my experiment a couple of videos ago actually demonstrates that as well. But I know it's popular. And as I said in the video, if you want to do something quickly, it's definitely the product to use. And today it's all about getting this thing in quickly so we can enjoy the bank holiday weekend. So I'm going to mix it this time the way I want to mix it. I'm not going to follow the instructions. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But anyway, the first thing to do is fill the hole with some water. So the way I'm going to be using this postcrete today is essentially by making small batches with a couple of inches of water in the hole. I start putting in the postcrete, but not all in one go, as the instructions say. Just enough that I can make sure that it's mixed properly down to the bottom. And then I add another layer and water and mix again and so on, each time making sure that I mix the current layer into the one below. So I end up with a well-mixed, monolithic, homogeneous foundation. Probably. One thing I have learnt is that there's a lot of people very passionate about post-crate or post-mix, especially following my video of a few weeks ago where I compared concrete to post-mix. If you haven't seen it, then please go and have a look. For those of you, of you that did see it, and especially those ones who commented, thank you for your comments. It's very interesting reading and demonstrated that a lot of people are very passionate about it. It was interesting when I did read the comments that some people said I put too much water in. The next comment would say that I put too little water in. And a number of you also said the biggest problem with me showing everyone how to mix postcrete was I followed the instructions. Would you believe? Well, I just think I would have got a lot more comments if I didn't follow the instructions. So 
maybe this time I'm saying, go for it, do what you want, follow the instructions. The way I'm doing it, I think is better because I know that each layer is being mixed properly. The one thing I don't know is how much water I'm putting in, in total. And if you know anything about concrete, you know that the more water put, you put in, the weaker it is. Anyway, if you don't worry about any of that sort of stuff and you just want to bang it in, then go for it. I'm trying to do it a little bit more scientifically, but I think it's really up to you. If you want to comment, please do. So that, I think, is a good job done. It's standing happily on its own with the small bit of bracing that I did put on now removed. And all I've got left to do is pin this water pipe in place. So once I get some clamps, that'll be a job for another day. And this post now is really solid. And with the string line up, and see it's nice and vertical. So that's a really good job to get out of the way, ready for the weekend. I've now got a nice vertical fence.